30 for It's college football time on the campus of James Madison University, where today the Dukes of JMU in their second year as a member of the Sun Belt Conference and of the football bowl division take on the Bucknell Bison, a program out of the Patriot League who come to town after a record of three and eight a year ago. The Dukes just the opposite at eight and three. And a very pleasant good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kurt Dudley in the broadcast booth, joined again this year by Vad Lee, former quarterback at James Madison University. And Vad, first of all, for the Dukes last year, going into the Sun Belt, going FBS, a lot of programs, a lot of folks around the country thought, if you win three games, that's a good year. They turned that around, eight and three. That makes this year one to kind of prove what they did last year. Absolutely, Kurt. This is an opportunity for JMU in season two of the FBS to validate what they did last year and to stamp the JMU brand. Meanwhile, for the Bucknell Bison under Dave Cicchnini, well, they're in their fifth season, and he would like for his, well, underdog Bison to play like it's week two, not week one. That's what he told us. What did he mean by that, Bad? Yeah, I love the cons the the comment from coach um, because going into this this first game you want to play mistake free right every coach wants to play mistake free but this is an opportunity as an underdog to come in and play mistake free well the dukes did win the toss and so they had deferred they will defer to the second half james madison will kick things off so the defense will be out for jmu now we'll go through the various uh, lineups the various units of James Madison this year as well as Bucknell and kind of get the set uh, set the season for you and teeing it up for the Dukes will be the former product of Bridgewater College out of Herndon Virginia Connor Madden who's back and healthy this year he'll do the kickoff chores for the Dukes while Camden Wise will step in as the field goal kicker two back for the Bison of Bucknell from Lewisburg Pennsylvania and the 2023 season is underway and we have the touchback right away for Bucknell and there to catch the touchback was Coleman Bennett so bad always an exciting day there was a quarterback battle at James Madison we'll get a chance to talk about that a little bit but for the Bison well they've got a new man under center this year as well and he is a transfer from Oklahoma by way of Lucas, Texas. We're going to see Ralph Rucker come out and run this offense, an offense that, well, quite frankly, the Bison want to up the tempo a little bit this year. Yeah, I'm excited to see what Ralph can bring to this Bison offense. Obviously, being a former Oklahoma guy, we'll get an opportunity to check him out today. He did appear in one game last year. They're going to start off with a handoff. Up the middle it goes, and the ball carrier is Rashawn Baker, who finished off the year with a bang a season ago. They got off to a bad start, won three of their last four games. He does pick up a couple of yards on the first carry. He's 5'11", 225 pound, a junior from Victor High School in Victor, New York. So second down and eight. Kurt, I'm excited to see what goes on in between the lines with those big boys up front. JMU has a very aggressive defense, and we'll see how um, Bucknell holds up. About the same formation with Rucker in the backfield out of the shotgun. Looks like he's going to air it out for the first time. Floats it underneath a little screen, and it is pulled in by Baker, and Baker picks up the first down for Bucknell. You know, starting off a game, you always, a coach always preached to get two first downs, at least two first downs. So I thought that was a great play call by coach to, to get Raph going and um, to get his first completion. So that'll put the ball at the 36-yard line, first down for the Bison. The Bison again, 3-8 and eight last year. And this is their fourth consecutive season taking on an FBS foe. And they believe that, well, the Dukes are the best of the four that they've seen coming into this game at the very least. And the handoff met right at the line of scrimmage. It goes to Coleman Bennett, but he gets thrown behind the line of scrimmage, loses a couple of yards on the play, second down and 12. Yeah, JMU got really aggressive there on the edge, and Booknail ran right into where the blitz was coming from. 
Great job by JMU defense. So it is second and we'll call it a short 12 as the ball is spotted between the 34 and the 35 yard lines. Looking at that lineup for James Madison in that secondary, the, the linebackers, the defensive front, a lot of names that you're familiar with, but a lot of new names out there, particularly in the depth. And the ball is dropped as Rucker wanted to flare it out. And it got knocked out of his hand, and that's a week one mistake right there, turning the football over deep in your own territory. Yeah, so unfortunate. I know Coach, he wanted to come and play mistake-free, but um, they got a turn on on the first drive, and they had a good thing going, Kurt. Yeah, Jamri Chroma comes up with the, inter the, excuse me, the fumble recovery, so the Dukes will have excellent field position yep. starting at the Bucknell 33-yard line you know, for their first possession replay. of the year. Looking at that replay, Kurt, that was a quarterback decision to throw the ball to the receiver. That was a run play, but the quarterback decided to throw the ball on that, and the running back just hit it with his elbow. So first and 10 for the Dukes at the 33, and we'll get our first look this year. We only got a peek at him last year, Alonzo Barnett the third, and we get our first flag of the 2023 campaign. While they're sorting this out, one thing, a rule change this year, the stoppage of the clock. Anytime there is a first down in the past years, they would stop the clock, set up the first down, and get rolling. Well, this year, in order to kind of cut off what they hope to be about eight plays a game per side, about 15 minutes of real time, the clock will run on first down plays, except in the final two minutes of the first half and the fourth quarter. There was a false start against the Dukes for the five-yard penalty, and the first pass for Barnett Looks like it's going to fall incomplete. Ethan Robinson out there on the coverage. Yeah, I love I love the confidence that they're giving Barnett to come out and throw on the first play of the game to kind of get those jitters out. We know that the JMU Dukes can run, but let's see what how they go in the air. Two receivers to both sides, and Barnett will hand it off to Kalon Black. Black gets stood up after gaining only a couple of yards as Cade Rooney comes in to stop Black. Black, a redshirt sophomore out of Virginia Beach, attended Salem High School last season, 69 totes, 330 yards, and three touchdowns. His last game last year had a pretty good ball game, 17 carries, 177 yards, and two scores in the victory over Coastal Carolina. So Dukes wrapped up the year and claimed themselves the beast of the East. Barnett with time. Looked like he's going to run up the middle. Now he's going to flare out to the near side in pursuit and gets rid of the football, and it is overthrown and intercepted. So both teams with early turnovers, and it's Ethan Robinson coming up with the INT. Yeah, as a quarterback, a young quarterback, Kurt, this is, um, you don't want to make a bad play worse. You know, he had a lot of time in the pocket, but just couldn't find the right guy. And um, it just, just made a bad play worse. And, and we want to avoid that if, if the jam you can. So two possessions and two turnovers. So Buck now will get its second possession and starting this time at the 27 yard line. Good crowd is on hand here at Bridgeport Stadium. As the Dukes have won 20 consecutive home openers. And they're looking for their fourth consecutive season opening victory. So here's the first down for the Bison. A little different formation this time. Two receivers to the top side with a tight end, a halfback off the right flank. Handoff goes up and popping out to the outside and brought down behind the line of scrimmage. The ball carrier. And again, behind the sticks is Bucknell as Josh Cheese Surratt makes the tackle for James Madison coming all the way from the safety position to do so, dra dragging down Rashawn Baker. Yeah, Kurt, I learned a long time ago when I was in Pop Warner Little League to do not run backwards. That time he got caught running backwards with the very athletic JMU defense. Well, it's going to be hard, I think, for the, this Bucknell team to really work the outsides trying to outspeed the Dukes. This time the formation somewhat similar but shifted to the opposite side and a screen pass underneath. Duke smelled it out. Surratt was there again. And the pass is hauled in. But short of the first down, 
as Charlie Kreinbucker, a sophomore from Butler High School in Pennsylvania, 6'5", 230 pounds target, only picked up a couple of yards. It's third down, third, and we'll call it eight from the 34. And Bucknell just want to make this third down manageable. They threw a quick slant flat concept, and we'll see what they dial up here on third down. Well, they got trips to the right, way on the outside, is Ukeo Oyungo. They want to go deep to him, and pressure in the backfield, eluding it as Rucker. Rucker flaring out right side. Gets around the football, and it's an exchange of interceptions. No, they say it is down as it's scooped up off the turf by Chauncey Logan. Oh, he baited him the entire time. I think he saw that he was coming, and uh, he wanted the quarterback to throw it right here, as we see, and he just kind of baited him. Ah, uh, came up, hit the ground. What a great effort by Chauncey. So in to punt. We'll see our first punt of the day. Should be Reuben Anderson. Deep to punt for the Bucknell Bison standing at his own 15-yard line. And back to receive for the Dukes is a very healthy Solomon Van Horse. If he can keep healthy, he should have an outstanding season for JMU. He's going to get a chance to return for a few yards. Brings it in at the 34. Breaks a couple of tackles. Uh -oh. He's across midfield. Spun free and then caught from behind there is coming in to make the stop. Van Horse is, is like a lethal weapon for JMU. Anytime he touches the ball, they could go to distance. So surprised they kicked it to him. So once again, the Dukes will have the ball in very good field position on the positive side of the line of 50. We're going to step aside for just a moment. As you're watching NCAA football, it's the season opener. The Dukes of JMU, the Bison of Bucknell, back in a moment. back everyone to Bridgeport Stadium. Kurt Dudley and Bad Lee with you on this opening night here in Harrisonburg. Lovely evening in the central Shenandoah Valley. So this is the Shenandoah Valley against the Susquehanna River if you would because Lewis Berry right there on the Susquehanna Bucknell located there and interestingly Susquehanna University which is a little north of Bucknell just beat Bridgewater College just a little south of here this afternoon. Uh -oh. Here goes Barnett on the move, and he'll pick up a good chunk of yardage on the first down carry. I love the zone replay. That'll get a quarterback going a little bit, being able to use his feet as an athletic guy. Mason Taylor coming up to make the stop, but again, it's a good chunk of yardage. So second down and a couple. Again, that backfield is very strong. Solomon Van Horst, Latrell Palmer. We've seen Kalon Black. Black is in there now. Going to the air, heading to the end zone, overshooting Green, the intended receiver. Yeah, I would just like Barnett. I would like to see that ball in the middle of play. It looked like that was might have been a post route there, and he had the middle of the field wide open and just, just sailed over his head. Oh, check that. That was not Green. Desmond Green, I thought that was the intended receiver. Instead, it's the newcomer for James Madison, Taji Hudson, who has received a lot of praise by Coach Kurt Signetti, the transfer from East Carolina. And there's the handoff going up to Kalon Black. Yeah, Hudson a little bit. Uh, he played for Mike Houston, of course, was the head coach before Kurt Signetti took over. But he has had a tremendous fall camp. Big target, works hard, should have a good season for James Madison. He's lined up here to the bottom of your screen. And out of the pistol, the handoff, it goes to Black, bowls his way through, and he comes up very close to a first down. Mike Bright may have denied him the necessary yardage to pick up a first down, but it's the playbook is open here, and I don't know if the playbook is really all that deep this afternoon but it's second down and one for James Madison. And a whistle will stop the play. There is replay today, of course. I did talk with the replay officials before today's game. 
Defense number 20, disconcerting signals. Five yard penalty results in a first down. So that picks up a first down. I saw a player last night in a ball game just defensively clapping to try to get another uh, player's attention, but it was mimicking the yep. quarterback, and it ends up being a delay a game, and so you get the same situation here. Well, Bucknell is just doing anything they can do to get an advantage, especially against this young quarterback. Rolls out to the right side. The wheel here is black, but he throws behind him. The fake of the handoff at first. And then Black just rolls open into the open space, but Barnett is off target. Yeah, Blake, Blake Leak did a great job of reading that. They tried to do a play action pass and just throw the, the, receipt, the running back on a wheel down the sideline. At the 17 yard line, second down and 10. Dukes received this possession after a punt. Terrell Palmer is now in the lineup for James Madison as Latrell. Can't get free of Mike Bright and loses a yard on his first carry this year. Yeah, there we see a little frustration on Latrell Palmer's face, but um, this is a big third down for JMU, especially for Alonzo Burnett. Palmer last year, nearly 400 yards on the ground. He'll stay in the lineup. You have Phoenix Sproles, the inside receiver here on the bottom of your screen. Hudson Sproles, the transfer from North Dakota State. Uh oh, the bison. That's right. Clear out right side and well defended in the end zone. Excellent job as Ethan Robinson, who already has a pick, knocks that football down. And so the Dukes will try to get their first points of the season by sending in the kicking unit. Again, Camden Wise, your kicker, a senior from Blacksburg, Virginia, on the Werfel watch list last year. 11 out of 16, and this will be a fairly short one of 36 yards. Snap is down, gets enough of it. Is it accurate? Indeed it is. So James Madison is on the board for the first time in 2023 as Camden Wise splits the uprights, and the Dukes have a three to nothing advantage. We'll take a timeout as James Madison Strikes first against the Bison of Bucknell. Back to Bridgeport in just a couple of moments. Three nothing James Madison on the field goal by Cameron Wise. Camden with that field goal makes it a three nothing advantage. We also are joined once again this season on the sidelines by Corey Spector. Let's see if Corey is available to chat with us a little bit here. Well, we'll see if we can catch up with Corey later on as Connor Madden will tee it up again for JMU. Got a touchback the first time. Kicking off from the 35 and right away. Ball is muffed, but it is a touchback once again. Coleman Bennett signaling as soon as the ball is kicked off. So they'll bring it out to the 25. Yeah, I would love to see this Bison offense complement the defense. That last G defensive drive was a win for the Bison. To have JMU only come up with three points, that was a huge win for the Bison. Now let's see what this offense can do. Yet to break the 50-yard line yet. Their third possession thus far, 10 total yards on seven plays. And a two back set. Probably got to watch some type of option for out. And pulling it out is Rucker and he gets head over heels as diving in was Francis Meehan. And that's exactly what they did on that play. That was a read option, kind of like a trip option play. You have the receiver flare out and JMU read it great. Torres Jones, one of the linebackers, also 
coming in for JMU. Jalen Walker and Torres Jones got a lot of playing time last year. Back with a lot of experience. Not the biggest guys for linebackers, but they make up for it in many other ways. Four down linemen, the rush coming on. The pass is thrown, and it's, it's caught, but falling down after receiving the football was Coleman Bennett. Yeah, that's, that's a third down now. Yeah, offensive coordinator John Bear, he's doing a great job of changing up the looks to keep the defense off balance. And they got a lot of emotions, a lot of different sets right now. So uh, we'll see how they what they do on this third down. Bear, the new offensive coordinator, one of four new assistant coaches for the Bison this year at seven schools, most recently at Southeast you know, Southeastern University where they averaged nearly 400 yards of total offense last fall. Here comes the pressure. Rucker rolling out. Flag comes out. And Rucker sidesteps one, but it is Taurus Jones catching him from behind. But I think there may be some infraction maybe holding in the backfield. Yeah, typically when the quarterback breaks the pocket, that, that the chances of holding goes up. Holding. Number 23 in the offense. Tenure penalty from the previous spot. We play third down. Deshaun Baker called for the holding. You know, Kurt, that's not a turnover, but that is almost equal to a turnover because that was a huge third down conversion for the Bison, especially being the underdog. But now, you know, the chains are moved back, and now we're looking at a third and 16. Again, the Dukes four down linemen that last time. James Carpenter in the middle again on the Nagurski watch list. Second team Sunbelt last year. Look at number 99. He's the nose tackle usually over the football. And Dukes will actually spread out that four man front. Actually looks like I'm going to put three hands on the ground. Although they do bring up Two other linebackers right up the middle, and the Dukes anticipated it well, and it was Carpenter that tripped up Baker. And Torres Jones, the linebacker aforementioned, also gets in there. Fourth down and nine. A great stop by JMU defense. Try to get some momentum going here. Give it back to your young quarterback and, and get it going. Van Horse again back to receive the punt the guys that we might expect to see back there this year Phoenix Sproles Solomon Van Horst Josh Surratt cheese he wants to be called we know him <laughs> as that of course and Devin Coles that's a nice punt turns it over drives back Van Horst to the 20 to the 25 he's got some run here on the outside gets it to the 35 to the 40 to the 45 50 and steps out of bounds inside Bison territory Big play, Van Horst. Great job, execution by the special teams. Tyler Smith drove him out. And the Dukes will have the football once again in Bison territory. We'll watch the return as we go to break. Dukes looking to add to their early 3-0 lead, number three with the return for JMU. Madison has the football, 3-0 lead for the Bison, uh, to, against the Bison uh, Bucknell. And let's take it down field level as we welcome in for the first time this year, Corey Spector. Well, Kurt, lots of question marks with this quarterback position for James Madison. Alonzo Barnett, a redshirt freshman, is young. But I'll tell you what, he has proven he can stamp an immediate impact on a program in his past. You go back to his junior year of high school, he transfers to Grimsley High in Greensboro, and he leads the Whirlies to an undefeated 10-0 season, the program's first state championship in 61 years. I spoke with Tino Sinceri, quarterback's coach for JMU, and he said two qualities really unlock Alonzo's success. Number one, his intelligence had over a 4.0 GPA in high school. And number two, he's a really likable guy. He's in there with his teammates. He's competing after practice, throwing the ball off the goalpost. As Kurt Signetti always says, you need your QB to be the face of your program. These guys have rallied behind Alonzo Barnett this season. He is the first redshirt freshman to start a season for the Dukes since the 2001 season when Matt Lazat was the starting QB. And there's more to that story, of course, 
Maybe we'll get to that today, but Barnett sends this over to Solomon Van Horst. You'll expect to see Van Horst coming out of the backfield, catching a lot of balls through the air. Yeah, Kurt, I, I can, you know, I love this Alonzo Barnett guy from North Carolina. As a former North Carolina myself, 4A state champ, player of the year, Alonzo have a lot of those qualities. So they're right now, they're giving him some opportunities to get the ball out of his hands quick and get it to his playmaker so that he can get some confidence. So he last played just a couple of towns over from actually where Elon is, Burlington, North Carolina. But uh, Coach Signetti was not aware of him because when he was at Elon, because after all, Barnett was pretty young during that time. And there's a first down for James Madison. And Barnett has a pretty good pedigree as well. His father, Alonzo II, or junior, he played football at, at North Carolina A&T and then signed with the Eagles and then played some World Football League. His uncle Troy, a fullback at North Carolina, played for the Patriots and Washington in the NFL. And keeping the football is Barnett, but he's tripped up right at the nine yard line. Great read, Barnett. He had one guy to beat to get to the touchdown, but number 14, Roman Pearson, got the best of him. Second down and goal for the Dukes. Dukes with 57 yards thus far, all three possessions starting inside Bucknell territory. Looking to come away with bigger points this time as he does shift Palmer to the left. Hands the football off to Palmer, goes to the outside, eludes a diving tackle, and takes it up to the six yard line. Great pursuit by the Bison defense. Latrell Palmer tried to get around him on the outside, but the Bison. Had a herd of bison right there. We're waiting on him. <laughs> Indeed it was. Brad Jamison. Submarines in and makes the tackle. So third down and goal. Those are the football just shy of the six-yard line. You know, Kurt, it's interesting. We see no safety deep. We see everybody above. So let's see if Jam U throws it up in the air. Tighten up the formation a bit. Hudson looking that way. Now looking over the middle, and it's over. The outstretched hand of Hudson. So fourth down. Yeah, he had him. The middle of the field is wide open. As we've seen pre-snap, there's no safety deep. So it's an opportunity. The middle of the field is void. And all he had to do is just get that ball down just a little bit. And he has his first touchdown of the season. See, Elijah Surratt wearing number 13. He's a transfer from St. Francis. See, he is the brother of Cheese Surratt. They're going to go for it here on they are on fourth. fourth down and six fourth and gold from the six. I like this call for challenge early for the Dukes Barnett stands tall Touchdown. floats it in and out of the end zone is Surratt. So the Dukes will turn the football over on downs as the pass was just a little too tall. Surratt got it but he ran out of real estate. Big win by the Bison defense. He was wide open and just couldn't get his feet down. Great throw by Barnett, but ran out of real estate there. I really like the call from Coach Signetti because this crowd with a new quarterback, you know, you kind of get a little restless. We, we have the JMU offense haven't scored a touchdown yet, only got three points on the board against the underdog Bison. I really like the call, just wish they could have executed. Well, one thing we can kind of point out, now I know the Dukes only have three points on three possessions, but the offensive line is extremely experienced. He has had certainly some time to work with, and we'll let you follow up on that as there is Jack Cavanaugh. You may know Jack. His voice here is boomed through not only Godwin Hall and Bridgeport Stadium and over at the Convocation Center. 50 years, the public address announcer, but he has stepped aside, retired. Everybody here loves Jack Cavanaugh. And airing it out. And ball is hauled in. Out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Big play for the Bucknell Bison. <laughs> you know, I hate to be biased, Kurt, um, but that's Damian Harris, a guy from my high school, Hillside in Durham, North Carolina, a guy who I actually coached in high school when he played quarterback. They're Kevin going to Cole him again. Was there defensively, and that pass overthrown, looking for him again on that side. Now, you go back with Harris. You've known him for quite some time. You, 
They call him Dame, but you have another nickname for him. Yeah, I call him Shadow. When I was his coach and mentor back in Durham, North Carolina, I would take him everywhere. Um, it, in all my speaking events and to college games, I would take him with me, and I would call him my Shadow because he was the next man up. So Rucker, the transfer from Oklahoma, in the backfield with him this time is Baker. Uh -oh. Takes the handoff. He's got a hole at the middle. Big first down, and he's dragged down behind. Two Dukes ultimately have to bring him down. And for the first time today, the Bison are in JMU territory. Francis Meehan on the last line of defense for the Dukes, and the Bison are hurrying up to the line of scrimmage. The quick snap ball is dropped, though. Rucker trying to make something out of nothing, and he picks up pretty good yardage, considering he had to bounce it off the turf. Well, this offensive line is certainly up, opening up the holes. I mean, I think an actual bison might have been able to run through those holes. Just not as fast, of course. <laughs> so second down and four. Rucker again with Baker beside him, stands tall. Now he's going to flare it out. Passes knocked down there defensively for James Madison, Devin Cole once again. Cole in his second season with the Dukes, a transfer from Norfolk State. So yeah, third down and see, four. What they see on offense is James Madison's playing man-to-man, -man, especially on the backside X. And when I say the X, I mean the single receiver on the backside. And, and what the quarterback is taught, he doesn't have to read a defense. All he has to do is just throw the one-on-one -on -one matchup and hope that his guy can come down with the ball. Two receivers to the top side, one here to the bottom right at the numbers in motion. That goes Weatherly. Up the middle, they actually hand the football off, and Bennett, one of the four captains for the team, is dropped by Mikhail Kamara. Kamara, all injured last year, all of last year, I should say, so good to see him back. Here's a fourth down and one. Hand off again, and a rule might be just enough. He hit the pile. Q Reed. Tried to stop him, but I'm pretty sure that Bennett, with that spinning move, had the length to lunge it out, although it looks like they might mark it back just a little bit. Yeah, I think his offensive line helped him on that. He was, he was laying on top of him and had the forward progress, but they're going to give it to JMU. Let's see. So it was shy by a yard. So he must have uh, had the elbow or the knee or something touch before he got to the look at line that. of scrimmage. I don't know, Kurt. He never looked like he was down. Q Reed coming off the edge there. Great well, push by Kamara. Yeah, bad JMU with the 3-0 lead. Both teams on their last possessions, turning it over on a set of downs. So JMU with its Longest field thus far, starting at its own 23. In motion is the new tight end for the Dukes, one of the transfers, Kai Wright. And there's Black, Black with a shifty move to the 40, across midfield, sprinting down the sideline, pinched down at the 22, and a big run for Kalon Black. Yeah, this, this, this crowd was getting restless, Kurt, and here it goes. A, a great, great run by Kalon Black. Here we go as we look at the replay. Look at that offensive line going. Look at that. Great cut. Wow. Had him on and that's how the first quarter will end with Kalon Black putting the ball deep into Bison territory. We'll be back with the second quarter of action. The Dukes lead it 3 to nothing over the Bucknell Bison. You're watching it right here on ESPN+. Plus.
First down for the Dukes of James Madison. Dukes first and goal. Kalon Black with the last carry. His carry to finish the first quarter, 57 yards, a career long. And he gets the hand, actually keeping the football this time is part. And he waltzes into the end zone. Touchdown, James Madison. And here comes those streamers. No. Oh, what a beautiful sight. I know. I know. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, touchdown for the Dukes of James Madison. We'll be back with more here in the second quarter. After these words, you're watching the Dukes and the Bison on ESPN+. Plus. I can't hear him. Madison leading the Bison of Bucknell. A rushing touchdown for Alonzo Barnett the third. Three plays, 77 yards. It was accompanied by a 57-yard run by Kalon Black, his longest of his career. So the Dukes have the 10-0 lead with 4.26 to go here in the first half of play. Connor Madden will kick off for James Madison. And once again, you have deep to receive. Coleman Bennett and again it goes to Bennett and he'll down it in the end zone once again so another touchback for the Dukes well let's take it down to field level once again with Corey Spector Coleman Bennett on that last carry. Uh, Kamara with the tackle. A game of about four. And great to see Justin Riscotti and all the other Hall of Fame inductees last night here on campus. Always a wonderful event. Part of the 35th inducted class at James Madison. 10 0 Dukes. Bison with the football. Rucker is going to change the, the call here. In that line for the Dukes, Jalen Green, James Carpenter. Jamry Chroma, the transfer from Rutgers in his second season with the Dukes. They stack it up after a short gain, third down and about three coming up. Yeah, it seems as Bucknell wants to establish some run game. It was great to see that offensive line. Big number 78 got a, got a, got a great push right there. Logan and Green. Bucknell 0 for 3 on third downs. Might be the biggest one yet now that JMU has the momentum. Might be the biggest one right here for him, Kurt. Timeout. Cut out. Bucknell, the first of the half. 30 second timeout. Timeout by the Bison.
Well, this is an opportunity now for the Bison to go back and draw on board. I think the coaches know how important this third down is for them now that JMU are, is getting a little confidence under themselves. We'll see what... We'll see what Coach Bear, the, off, the new offense coordinator, comes out with. You know, this, this Bison offense finished... They only averaged about 12 points last season. Um, so this is an opportunity now for the, the coach to dial it up right now. Two by two set. Wow, what a dart. What a dart by Ralph Rucker, the Oklahoma transfer. Great job coming back to the ball. Aiden Fisher on the, on the tackle there. I'm not sure what the referees are. Like the referees are holding it up right here, try to figure out. The result of the play is a first down. After the play, personal foul, 11 the offense, and they hit out of bounds. The 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the dead ball spot. First down. Fans, we do apologize. We're having some technical difficulties uh, back up here in the booth with our audio. So Kurt Dudley and Bad Lee here in the booth. And a first down, let's see what uh, they're reviewing. Actually, they're not reviewing. They're setting it up for Bucknell. Well, they still got the first down here. First and 10 at the 34. Two receivers to the top side, two to the lower side of your screen. Rutger back to pass straight, drops it underneath, and what? Aiden Fisher nearly picked off that ball as it went right through the hands of Baker. I beg their pardon, that was actually Bennett. Aiden Fisher nearly coming up with the interception. From the 34, second down and 10. Sean Baker in the backfield. 116 yards thus far for Bucknell. Handoff goes to Baker, and he is met by Fisher just as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Does wheel forward, manages to lunge for, to pick up a couple of yards, second down. Make it third down, beg your pardon. Third and uh, about seven. One for four, the Bison on third down this afternoon. Rucker back, a passing again, surveys the middle, and it's brought down another fabulous catch. We had an earlier great catch, and this is another, a good competition catch. Jarius Romanique defensively for the Dukes, but it picks up a first down just inside James Madison territory. Another first down for the Bison. 10 0 Dukes. Barnett rushing touchdown. Wise with the field goal. Now it's your scoring here in the first half. 11 04 to go in the second quarter. Rucker looking right. Nearly got the ball knocked out of his hands, but he does release it, and that is another completion. Devin Coles 
Excuse me, bad. Devin Coles, the tackle. Adam Barakat with his second catch of the afternoon. Second and seven. It's Baker, the ball carrier. Gain of about a half yard as he's dropped at the 35. Third down and six from the 35. James Carpenter in on that last tackle for James Madison. Dukes opening up at home, but the next three weeks on the road, including next week's shortest trip of the year, they'll head over to Charlottesville to take on the Virginia Cavaliers, who were handled by Tennessee earlier today. Rutger on third down. Here comes some pressure. And getting free, but he is knocked out of bounds as Romanique stops him shy of the first down, tries to hold the football out there as he was pursued by uh, quite a few Dukes. Hustling to the line of scrimmage on fourth down. They will snap the football. Rucker again, backside pressure. There's a hold. He looks like he picks up the first down, head over heels. But I think this one's coming back. In fact, the Dukes have a player down on the turf. Holding, 59 the offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. We'll play fourth down. Down for the Dukes is Abby Okonji. See, he gets held right there and looked like that left ankle. He's had a little bit of a lower leg injuries to worry about, uh, concern. There's the hit that turns him upside down. We're going to take a timeout, though, as they do 10 to the injur injured James Madison player. 10 0, James Madison, a penalty coming up against. The Bison of Bucknell will take a timeout. We'll be back to Bridge Four Stadium in just a couple of moments. James Madison has a 10 0 lead over the Bison of Bucknell with the penalty on Bucknell as we return to the action here. At Bridge Force Stadium. We again we do apologize for the technical issues we're having with our audio, but our cameramen and our director are working to perfection. And so Surratt, Cheese Surratt will go back and return for the Dukes of James Madison, standing at his own 10 yard line. So fourth down and 12 will set up this punt. Short punt that it is will not get a lot of distance and ends up shanked out of bounds. And they're marking it off all the way at the 35 yard line. The Dukes will take it from there. We'll take another timeout. With 840 to go in the first half, James Madison 10, Bucknell nothing. Eight forty to go in the second quarter. We've got some fans here looking. Uh, actually, you know, Justin Riscotti. This kind of looks like reminds me of the Minnesota Vikings. The purple, the, of course, the Viking helmet. Uh, Riscotti now the second year as the offensive line coach for Minnesota, which uh, goes way back into the early 1970s. That's actually the team that I've followed for many years. So it's kind of cool to have Justin working there. And the handoff gains just a couple of yards as Barnett 
Gives it up to Kalon Black. Black picks up a couple of yards. Second down and eight. So 10 nothing Dukes, 8.21 to go. We'll send Black over to the left side. Two receivers to the top. Handoff goes to Black up the middle. Lunges forward for a couple of yards. And Mike Bright. Bright has been a bright spot, we'll say. He's been on many of the tackles thus far. The pun was just too easy not to, not to take advantage of. Third down and five. Got Hudson to the top side. Zach Horton in the slot. He's the on the left side. Sproles and Brown here to the near side. Barnett flares it out, though he bounces it. Yeah. They know that he's a young, young man, a young quarterback back there, and it seems like they're just playing man to man and bringing some pressure as well. All right, so back to punt. We will see our first punt of the season from Brian Hansen, the transfer from Arkansas State. Finished second in the Sun Belt last year with an average of 43.7 yards on 48 punts a year ago. His career average still pretty darn good, 48.1. And he'll get a favorable bounce, gets it to roll. The Dukes will pin it inside the five, inside the two. And Hansen says, hello, JMU fans. Down by Luke, or Luke Freeman back there. Welcome to JMU, young fella. That was a great punt down at the one. You can't draw it up any better than that. Hansen, 6'2", 210-pounder from Elgin, Texas. On the Ray Guy watch list. Had a career long of 73 against Texas State a couple of years ago. But that uh, is an excellent job of getting that one pinned back inside the one yard line. Yeah, as a coach, you, you don't want to see the worst thing happen right here. You're, you're at your one yard line. Um, probably try to run and try to pick up a few yards here. But Jim, you has a big defensive front right here. So this can be dangerous territory for the Bison. Rucker standing in his own end zone, tightens it up on the right side. Here's a snap, the handoff goes to Baker, bowls his way across the five yard line. See where they'll mark it. Jalen Green with the tackle for the Dukes. You know, so far I'm impressed by this offensive line for the Bison to be able to um, take on the challenge of the defensive line at JMU. Looks like we have an injury out, out here on the field. Brent Austin down for James Madison. Well, Konji went off just a short while ago as well. But he is up on his feet relatively quickly. Always great to see when a young man gets back up on his feet. This game is a very physical game, but those guys get on, get back on their feet. It's a great sight to see. Seems like he might have a stinger. A lot of those defensive guys get stingers when they go in for the tackle. They were talking a little bit about Justin Riscotti. Those other Hall of Fame inductees last night, Casey Ann Caro of lacrosse, Kim R.G. Estes of women's soccer, Brent Matheny of baseball, Jacob Wookie, an archer who has a gold, uh, excuse me, a silver medal from the Olympics. And he was actually performing yesterday in Pennsylvania, trying to make the team this year. Wow. Drove to do the induction last night and left at 7 o'clock this morning to continue to try to qualify for the U.S. team here in 2023 for the 24 Olympics. Wow, that's a sharp young man. Just a couple of yards, not enough to pick up the first down. James Carpenter bottling up things in the middle once again. And James Carpenter got the best of that offensive line right there, showing the experience of that defensive line at GMU. And here we are again with another third down for the for the Bison. And last drive, they actually converted two, two third downs on that last drive.
Out of the pistol. Bennett. He'll take the handoff. No, pedaling it out is Rucker. Rucker rolling across the 10, and he gets the first down at the 15-yard line. And Rucker wisely slid there. I've seen him go airborne maybe three or four times so far in the game. I know that he's excited that this is his first game finally getting that action that he wanted to see, and he got the first down and got down. You love to see that from your quarterback. Here gets Meehan turned around, and then Fisher comes in for the final takedown, but it is a first down. And that is number five for Bucknell. School chartered in 1846. And the handoff goes up again to Bennett. It seems like Bucknell's strategy a little bit is, is to spread out the defense by putting those wide receivers so far out wide, and then that that limits the number of those that are in the in the in the gap of the football. In the box. Wheatley and Harris split far to the left as they work off the right hash. Got a Rucker looks box. like he's changing things here. 4-2 box from the defense, two safeties high. Dropping the football again, a mismatch on the exchange, and the Dukes are there to drop him down. You know, they had Dave a chance Fisher there. Again. They really had a chance there. They had a nice hole, but mishaps, that's, that's the, about the second or third time they had mishaps back there in the backfield. Third down. Three out of seven on third downs. They've got to pick up five to keep this drive going, which started inside the own, their own one. Rucker, here comes the pressure. He eludes it somehow, but he will not pick up the first down, and Bucknell will have to punt the football away. Torres Jones finishing things off. A great job by JMU defense. Rucker has been, he's been doing damage with his legs so far, so that time they had a spy on him, and um, they were able to get him before he could get the first down. Yeah, Rucker, seven carries now for about 20 yards. There you go. You got, got a great picture of Coach Ch Cicchini. Ruben Anderson again to punt. And Surratt back to receive. This is Cheese once again. He's back at his own 37. See if he He'll can field it at the zone. 41. Comes to the near side, cuts over the 50 to the 45, and whirled down right there. So the Dukes will take the football over at the 45-yard line. And a TV timeout coming up. Indeed, Van, we will take a TV timeout. With well, the Dukes leading at 10 to nothing, 3.09 to go before intermission. You're watching JMU football against the Bison of Bucknell on ESPN+. Plus. Closing in on the first half of action here at Bridgeport Stadium. James Madison with a modest 10 to nothing lead over their guests from the football championship subdivision. Of course, the former home of James Madison as well. Although these two programs never played each other when they were both at the FCS level. Dukes are actually three and five all time against teams from the Patriot League. The last time they played was actually Mike Houston's last game as the head coach of the Dukes when the Dukes lost to Colgate on the road as the pass is incomplete. That was uh, round number two of the 2018 Division I AA or as the FCS playoffs. Those were the interchangeable names of course. Yeah, Kurt, right there on the last play, you want to see Alonzo take advantage of the wide open receiver. I think he just threw it a, a little short. Zach Horton sitting up here on the right side. Handoff will go to Black. Black breaks free to the 35, gets a block from Barnett down to the 15 yard line. <laughs> I see you, Alonzo. Go ahead and get you a block, QB. It wasn't really one of those pancake blocks, but it was just, let me get in the way. 
well at, um, at, at six foot, 203 pounds. I think he went backwards a little bit, but hey, it's worth a try. Great job, Alonzo. So Black, earlier in the game with a 57-yard run, is a career high. And now he has broken 100 yards as he has 117 on the first half alone. Gain of two on that carry. Alex Smith making the tackle for the Bison. Yeah, they put Palmer back in the game. Palmer is the big bruiser back. Let's see how they manage this offensive drive with coming up on two minutes. Seems like Luttrell has been here since the last championship in 2016. And there is Palmer. And he's going to kick his way to the end zone like a fucking Bronco. And here come those streamers at JMU, one of the best traditions of all of college football. And with that, the Dukes expand the lead 16 to nothing. Yeah, great job by that offensive line, that an experienced offensive line. They did a great job opening a hole for Latrell Palmer. Really good seal block. And the rest is history. See you in the end zone. So the point after. And it is good. Camden Wise picks up his fifth point of the day. A field goal and a couple of field goal. Uh, it's good. Field goal and a couple of extra points. Yeah, great opportunity to call out some of these offensive linemen. Tayshawn Watt, Tyler Stevenson, Tanner Morris, Cole Potts, and Nick Kidwell. Great job by the starting offensive line of JMU. The Kidwell, the only senior on that group from Knoxville, Maryland, 6'5", 316 pounds, fifth year senior. And again, a very experienced line. And to me, that's a key point for this team and the development of this young quarterback. And you know, they've given him time. Has he been accurate all the time? No, but it is the season opener. They have done a great job giving him time. You know, as a coach, this is an opportunity to try some things. You kind of know that you're in control of the game because you have such a, a strong run game. But this is an opportunity to continue to develop your quarterback further for greater competition ahead. Palmer with his 15th career touchdown, of course, the first of 2023. And this one will not quite make the end zone, but it is fair still catch. the fair catch. So Kalon Black, third career 100-yard rushing game. Latrell, 15th career rushing touchdown for James Madison. There's two sides to this drive as a coach. If I'm the coach for the Bison, I do not want to give the ball back to JMU right before halftime. And if I'm JMU coach, I do not want Coach Sinani, I do not want to give the Bison any advantage going into halftime, any type of momentum. Yeah, Coach Caccini, let's see what he wants to do with it. Just 2.02 to go. Oh. Fakes to the right side, goes over the top. What a uh, nice grab. And who was that guy? Damian Harris. I see you, Shadow. Way to go and get it, big boy. Jacob Thomas was there to help take him to the turf. And that's what the Deuce did not want to happen. Here we go, play action again. And again, Thomas comes up with it and wrestled Harris. down. Yeah, Damian Harris, that seems like to be the favorite target. He actually led the conference in receiving, or the, he actually led his team in receiving last season. 51 yards against Colgate. One of their better games last year. Rucker airs this one out and finds a receiver again. A broken tackle as Eric Weatherly spins out of the grasp and picks up some additional yards after picking up the first down. This is exactly what the Bison offensive coordinator John Barrett wants to do. He wants to go fast. He wants to establish a tempo and keep it, keep the ball moving and getting first downs. He's got 62 seconds to put some points on the board. 
He will send Weatherly in motion. Weatherly comes around, takes the handoff, and he is driven into the turf as Chroma wraps him up. Second down and okay. 10, no gain on the play. The second time out of the half. This is a 30 second timeout. The Bison will take a 30 second timeout. They wisely use a great timeout right there and really just regroup, start their clock 50 seconds. This is exactly what the defense didn't want to happen, but exactly what the Bison wanted to happen to get some momentum before going into halftime. Of course, the first full Saturday of college football around the country. Prime time got his win at TCU. Wow, what an amazing <laughs> game. That Incredible. Was, I mean, I was, uh, don't do this, but I was all driving here, and, man, I just had to tune into the game. <laughs> what a great finish. Some of the opponents the Dukes will face, some of the outcomes thus far. Uh, UConn lost to North Carolina State earlier in the week, 24-14. Virginia fell to Tennessee 49 13 the Dukes take on the Cavaliers tomorrow Iowa defeated Utah State 24 to 14 and Georgia State over Rhode Island 42 35 Rhode Island of course from the Coastal Athletic Association a little mix up on the pattern it was intended for Tate a senior from Staten Island but it brings up a third down. Yeah, see on that play, that might have been some miscommunication with the quarterback and receiver. Typically when a coach calls a hitch route, which is a five-yard stop route, if the DB is too close, the receiver can actually convert and take it over top. But the quarterback threw it over top while the receiver still ran the five-yard stop route, the hitch route. It ends up as an incompletion. Rucker in this first half, 11 for 16, 127 yards. Takes the handoff, steps back, steps up now, and caught! It is Torres Jones with the tackle. Big for the JMU defense. The quarterback went backwards. Now that puts the field goal. It makes it hard for the field goal kicker. Wow, string tackle. So a decision. Here for the Bison, fourth down. It's would be a very long field goal from here. Coach is just going to let the, run, the clock run down. Maybe try to kick a field goal. Now Matt Shear had three field goals, a 40 plus yards last year, including a 50 yarder. This would be a 49 yarder if they attempt it from here. But he calls a timeout. It'd be great for the Bison to lead this half with some points on the board. So we'll see. It looks like they actually are going to hit this. And on the other side for JMU, they want to pitch a shutout in this first half. So all is riding on this one play for the first half. Coach Caccini. Long lineage, heritage in football. His father, Tom, played at Michigan. Kurt and then was, was coaching with Minnesota. That was Taurus Jones' first sack of the season and second career sack. Big They're going to try the long field goal. He's got the distance, direction, and it is good. It's good. He's hype about it, too. That puts the Bison on the board. Shearer, as I mentioned, has a good strong leg. Man, that's big for the Bison going in the halftime to get a little confidence. 49 yard field goal, it does officially go down. And as the play clock expires to end the first half, the Dukes and the Bison head into their respective locker rooms. Only a 14 point ball game. One of the tighter first halves the Dukes have had in their most recent home openers. They've won 20 in a row here at home for the season openers. Can they continue that streak? Halftime coming up with Corey Spector when we return.
17-3. James Madison leading the Bison of Bucknell here at Bridgeport Stadium. We'll continue with more of our halftime as Corey Spector sits down with the Dukes athletic director, Jeff Bourne. He's got some interesting things to talk about when we come back after this timeout. The Marching Royal Dukes are on the field. It is halftime from Bridgeport Stadium in game one of the 2023 collegiate football season. James Madison with a 17-3 edge over Bucknell. Hey, everyone. Welcome fieldside. Corey Spector with you on ESPN+. Plus. Thanks so much for joining us on your Saturday afternoon. James Madison entering its second year of FBS football and its second year overall in the Sun Belt Conference. Earlier this week, I chatted with James Madison's director of athletics, Jeff Bourne. After the Dukes finished second in the Boobis Cup a season ago, only behind South Alabama, a lot of program-wide success. I asked him if everything went to plan in year one in the FBS. First year, uh, I think it's a good testament to how prepared we were, and credit goes to the coaches and the student athletes and to our administration to help make things happen facility-wise for us that allow us to compete in this league uh, at a really high level. Let's talk about the football program to begin. When we chatted last year, you said, my goal for this program is to be competitive, not to get blown out consistently. I don't know if you've ever could have imagined eight and three, East champions in the Sun Belt Conference. Overall, how do you evaluate year one in FBS football for James Madison? Absolutely phenomenal start. Just you couldn't have imagined it. We were talking last year, and I thought, you know, if we had won five games, I would have been a happy guy. Six, I would have been jumping around the room and to think the way that we played and the way we finished I think is truly remarkable and it uh, it really does paint a, a great picture for our future and it just goes to show we deserve to be here. Second year now in FBS football you're not going to make anyone fall asleep on you because everyone's paying attention now picked first in the East Division in the Sun Belt Conference so now what are your expectations in year number two of the FBS? Well first and foremost I want to stay healthy. You know, I think we've got a really good football team. Um, we're deep, but at the same time, you're only as good as, as what happens to you on the injury list. So I hope we stay healthy. Um, I want to see us play every game to the, to the bitter end. I know we will, and uh, let's, let's see what happens. It's just, uh, to me, last year was, a, again, a testament to how good we are. Um, this is a tough league. That, that, that um, spot on her back, that target got a lot larger last year, and everybody this year will be gunning for us in an attempt to say uh, that, was, that was a fluke. That wasn't supposed to happen. And uh, we all know better, but uh, at the same time, uh, they're going to come after us. Our thanks to Director of Athletics, Jeff Bourne, for joining us. That part of a nearly 10-minute conversation that you can find on James Madison's YouTube page, if you so choose. It is halftime here from Bridgeport Stadium. It's been a little bit of a prickly start for James Madison. The Dukes on top by 14 over Bucknell, but trying to respond in the second half. More coming your way in just a moment on ESPN+. Thirty minutes down. We've got thirty more minutes to play here inside of Bridgeport Stadium. Fans trying to find their energy in half number two. Their host, James Madison Dukes, on top, 17 to three over FCS and Patriot League Bucknell. We'll have highlights and stats coming up next, right here on ESPN Plus. Seventeen three at halftime here on ESPN plus I'm Kurt Dudley along with Fat Lee of course Corey Spector down at the sideline. Thanks for Corey's work there at halftime as we get ready for the second half. Now the Dukes have been out gained in this one. Two hundred four yards to one eighty seven. We'll take a little closer look at the stats here in just a moment. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half of play. And there's coach Kurt Signetti of course and his Leading this program his fifth season, also a fifth year head coach in Coach Chanini on the other side. And an early turnover, actually a couple of short fields for the Dukes. Bad when you look back at it, I'm sure they would have liked to have had more than three points out of the first three possessions. 
Yeah, absolutely, Kurt. When you got a young quarterback, you want to get him going a little bit. So it seems like they was given the opportunity to pass the ball. But finally, he got in the end zone and got to get his first career touchdown at GMU. That was a nine yard run. It came early in the second or in the uh, in the period. And then here's the trail Palmer. With the touchdown run. And we'll take a look at the numbers. As I mentioned, the Dukes were outgained in this one. Only 15 yards in the air as Barnett three uh, three completions on 11 tries for the 15 yards. But the running game has got going there. You've got two backs with outstanding performances in the first half for the Dukes. Uh, most notably, of course, Kalon Black, eight totes for 117 yards, the long of 57. Latrell Palmer, 36 yards on six carries, and he scored a touchdown. And Barnett's carried the ball three times for 19 yards. Well, the best thing about Alonzo Barnett, didn't have the greatest half as a quarterback, but the best thing is they get the ball coming out of the halftime and get an opportunity to restart this thing and get a it going. A little pooch kick, and the Dukes will call for the fair catch. And doing so was not sure actually who the was receiver there for the Dukes. So the Dukes will have pretty good field position at the 25 yard line. Yeah, I'm curious to know how aggressive this offense is going to come out with. Of course, you got a big opponent next week, and coaches are probably not to try to show the whole playbook, but this is an opportunity now for Alonzo and the offense to get going. It was Taylor Thompson that made the fair catch for the Dukes. Give him credit. So they'll start by rushing the football. Right up the middle, you see Horton with the lead block. Gain of about four yards on the first play here in the half, and Blake Leak making the tackle. Some really good push by that offensive line. Tanner Moore's the, the center, red shirt, junior, 6'2, 308, 302 pounds is leading the way. Black with a handoff. Met just before he gets to the line of scrimmage. As Blake Leak there once again. You know, I'm hearing some sounds from a, from the field, and it sounds like that Bison's defense is trying to turn up, and they know how important this third down is to get a stop so that the offense can get the ball. And JMU has only had the ball for one minute so far. Well, they got the field goal to close the first half, looking for a little offensive mo uh, momentum. Of course, the defense can keep that mo going, starting here if they can get a stop. And it looks like they will. Hmm. Brad Jamison jams up inside. No gain for the Dukes. And like a three it. and out for James Madison to start the third quarter. I like it. Brad Jamison jams up inside. I see you, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ben. <laughs> well, three and out. That's not how you want to start the second half if you jam you. And for the Bison, you finished the first half with points, and now it's an opportunity to build on that this second half. Hanson, that punt that got dropped inside the one, traveled 59 yards. Of course, he got a favorable bounce, but you also got to get the guys down there to cover. So an excellent special teams. This is a very good punt all the way back to the 25 and he brings it back to the 35. So good 10 yard return. Yeah, great job by number nine Ethan Robinson taking a punt being very courageous to go run up that middle get a few yards and get his bison the ball back. Baker seven carries for 47 yards in the first half. Coleman Bennett eight carries for 17. Rucker seven for 13. Harris has been the top receiver for both clubs four recept or targeted four times three receptions for 61 yards. The handoff and it stood up. Right at the line of scrimmage with Baker nowhere to go. Let's take a field level once again. A little more on Mr. Harris with our own Mr. Spector. Yeah, we saw Damian Harris make an impact in the first half. The one word to describe his career at Bucknell, turbulent. 
freshman year in college, he develops a stomach ulcer. He was extremely distressed, thinking, what if I never showcase my skills again? He said he recovered through prayer and patience, but once he departed the hospital, he wasn't allowed to run or stand upright for too long for eight consecutive months. He then tore his hamstring as a sophomore, but he ends up leading Bucknell in receiving last year, and he said this year, I'm just out to prove I'm the best receiver in the Patriot League. Rucker flushed out of the pocket and brought down as coming up to make the tackle for James Madison is Jacob Thomas. What a story on Damien. You know him and I have a lot of have had a lot of private conversations and as he know I talk about purpose over position a lot. You know he was in a really tough position both physically and mentally but he seized the opportunity when he came back and now here he is leading his team and receiving last year and also in this game and hoping to add more to the stat book. Third down and 13. The handoff a hesitation as Bennett one of the four captains tiptoes his way through but Jalen Walker shuts the door on him. Yeah, very interesting from both coach Sassini and coach Signati. They both decided to run on third down, and now that led to a turnover for both sides. So Ruben Anderson back to punt. First time, second half. He punted the ball four times in the first for an average of 36.8, a long of 54. Who we got back there? That's Cheese. Cheese. Oh. And it's blocked. Ball will spin free. Picked up by the Bison, but the Dukes will have it deep into Bucknell territory. Special teams play. That is the momentum, and that is the play on special teams that the JMU needed to get this offense going. Trent Hendrick breaks through the sophomore from Richmond, Virginia, where he played at St. Christopher's. Boom. Great execution by the special teams. St. Christopher's, I believe that former offensive coordinator Jeff Durden during the national championship season, I think he's doing some work with St. Christopher's now, and Hendrick doing some work on special teams. Yeah. First and ten for the Dukes. And Barnett will pull it down. It looks like he stepped out of bounds just inside the 10 as he was gliding along with Latrell Palmer. Yeah, Alonzo was trying to stay up on his feet. That was a zone read, meaning that you read the defensive end and see if he crashes down. If he if he crashes down, the quarterback has the ability to run on the outside. It's same Palmer, play. but it's the same play. This time he picked up the first down. I think they're going to give him the forward progress. Blake Leak had in mind of stopping him shy, but nope, the Dukes will pick up a first down. It's probably the best play that they've ran so far that zone read where they give the lines the ability to read defensive end and they give it to the trail, as we see right here. He extends the play, uses his legs to turn forward. Drop between the two and the three yard line. Second down and goal. The big man does not go down easily. Dukes with tempo. Palmer again. Palmer not quite in the end zone. Third down and goal. Cade Rooney stopped him shy. Here comes Sproles into the lineup. You know in this situation as a coach you have two plays at the two yard line. You know I'll probably take a chance and run the ball here. That way you get it closer to the end zone or you get it into the end zone. Palmer remains in the backfield steps to the left. He'll take the handoff and he doesn't gain anything at all. Yeah it seems like the Bison knew what was coming. I'm not sure if JMU have they can have they attempted to pass yet in the second the second half. No, it's been all on the ground. Great adjustment by that 
defensive coordinator for the Bison, Chris Bowers. Here we go again. Going for it on fourth. The Dukes threw the ball through the end zone. Barnett was looking for Tajay Hudson, but overthrew him underneath the goalpost. I got a feeling right here. The coach in there is looking for toughness is out of his offense. Keep an eye on your mere night, number 20. In fact, he's going to take the pitch, the speed to the outside. Bumped, stays on his feet, but he'll come up shy as he brings it to the four. And that is where Bucknell will take over two fine defensive stands near the goal line today for the Bison. Man, the Bison are hyped. They read that all the way. Well, Dukes got to be disappointed. They've been down there a couple of times trying to go for it on fourth down and goal, and they've come up empty on each occasion. Timeout on the field here at Bridgeport Stadium. Bucknell has the football back when we return, and they trail 17 to 3. King Hall across the campus, across the Interstate 81. Here on the campus of James Madison University. Welcome back, everyone. Lights taking full effect here. There's the Marching Royal Dukes, one of the other longtime traditions. Big, big marching band with a big sound. And King Hall, I remember taking some classes in the Kurt. I do named not it. want to go back right yeah. now. <laughs> named after Charlie King, former vice president who Sought uh, actually took care of a lot of the finances for much of the athletic building here on campus in many in the last two decades basically he has recently retired he and his wife Sherry as well. And that might be a safety very close no he is just in the green they gave him four progress on that. Mikhail Kamara got the tackle he'll get the TFL tackle for loss. And we'll see it once again. Oh man, he just beat number 82, Macau. Great jump, great beat on the snap. You know, sometimes when you use the same snap count, those defensive linemen, they get used to that. So the Bison may need to change it up a bit. Defensive line is an area that Coach Kurt Signetti needs to see and wants to see a little bit more depth. He's fine with the starters, but needs to see some of the guys on that depth chart start to step up. A couple of young guys we'll keep an eye on. And barreling through the way is Rashawn Baker. Baker yeah. had a touchdown in each of the last four games last year, five total during that stretch. Yeah, defensive line coach Pat Koontz, him and I worked together in Indiana a few years ago. He's an aggressive guy, and I know he wants an aggressive defensive line. Yeah, very intense. Enjoy watching his coaching during practices here at Bridgeport. Has a young child as well. Got one on her way. Faking the handoff, trying to throw from the end zone, releases it, and it is just thrown out of bounds. Really great defense by JMU. They strap it up. Kamara again putting on the pressure after nearly getting the safety. Yeah, so Duke should get excellent moving. field position here at Bad. Pardon me. Yeah. Yeah, no, Chauncey Logan, the sophomore, 6'1", 200 pounds. He gave a little strap signal, put the seatbelt on because <laughs> he strapped up the receiver right there. Ruben Anderson will need to really turn one over here to try to flip the field. Cheese Sherratt is standing at the Bison 45. Good snap. Uh -oh. Kind of a low trajectory. It'll take a hop. Sherratt, oh, he's going to let it roll. Great decision by Surratt. Yeah, absolutely, because he knew the Dukes are going to get excellent field position, and they will at the 42-yard line. That's where we will pick things up when we come back. James Madison looking for its first points of the second half, leading at 17-3 over the Bison of the Patriot League and Bucknell University. Well, James Madison offensive line have helped the Dukes to rush for 188 yards. More on this experienced unit for the Dukes with Corey. Yeah, Kurt, much has been made this offseason of all five offensive line starters for James Madison. Spoke with right guard Cole Potts, and he told me the unit's chemistry, grittiness, determination to do their best on every single play. 
that's what unlocks their dominance. He said, we want to hit someone as hard as we can every single snap. But he said the difference in year two together as a unit, instead of reacting to the defense, they're dictating where the defensive line goes. That'll certainly help the run game, and of course, it'll help the young and mobile quarterback in Alonzo Barnett. Yeah, talking about Cole Potts. Cole, 6'3", 306 pounds. He's the right guard, a junior from Johnstown, Ohio. They play some pretty darn good football in the Buckeye State. One man in the backfield, that is Black. Throwing it out, right side, wide open is the receiver. And a first down picked up. Is that Thornton? The tight end split way out to the right side. Yeah, Zach Horton. And actually, it is not Barnett, as they have called upon Jordan McLeod, the transfer from Arizona. He'll step back, wings it out the other side. That one's knocked down. Going for Zach Horton for the second consecutive time, but instead, Jeff Adongo flies in and knocks the football down. Yeah, it's good to see a new quarterback here. Um, McLeod from Arizona, he has a lot of a playing experience, so let's see if he can take advantage of this opportunity that he's given. Yeah, 23 career games split between Arizona and South Florida. Had a really big game against Central Florida. Ball comes loose. Now, was that a matter of him being down? No, they're saying it's down. The line judge is signaling that he was down before the ball came free. Mason Tyler got uh -huh. in there to jar things loose. McLeod, six even, nearly 200 pounds, a fifth year senior out of Tampa, Florida, Plant High School. That's a really good. Athletic High School. James Madison has pulled a few like volleyball players from plant. Daniel Erb comes to mind. Speaking of volleyball, the Dukes knocked off number 22 Western Kentucky today. Timeout, James Madison. And the Dukes are going to use the timeout. 30 second timeout. This is a 30 second timeout, so that'll let me talk a little bit more. The Dukes, the reigning champs in volleyball in the Sun Belt. Just outside the top 25, Coach Lauren Steinbrecher scheduled really tough in September. In fact, they face number 14 Penn State tomorrow mm. at Penn State. That's where today they knocked off Western Kentucky, the 22nd ranked team in the country. That's the kind of win the Dukes need to get a better seed should they repeat as Sun Belt champs, and they are the favorite, and get into the NCAA tournament once again. JMU volleyball means business. Well, and that was a marquee win. And last Sunday, the men's soccer Dukes, who are now number 17 in the country, they're off to a 3 0 start for the first time since, I believe, 2010. They knocked off UCLA. And that was last Sunday here under the lights at Centera Park in Harrisonburg. Yeah, I think I even caught that one on TV, Kurt. Did you? Yep. That was yeah, a big Corey, Corey was on the call there with. Dave Lombardo. Third down and three. McLeod waits for Horton to set up. Has the football. No, he's going to pull it back out. He's going to race to the left side. Finds a bit of a seam and picks up the first down. Inside the 10, they mark it all the way down to the six. John Schellendorf eventually brings him down. Jordan McLeod say, look, man. I got some wheels too. Let me pull this ball and get a gain of 15 plus. First and goal for the Dukes. Came up empty down here last time, but McLeod's got him moving. Handoff. Touchdown, James Madison. The transfer from Stony Brook for JMU, Tyson Lawton. Streamers. Great execution by the offensive line of JMU. We talked about how aggressive they wanted to be, Corey did, and they did a great job on that play. Seems like JMU had a little more life on that drive, Kurt. I believe it. Yes, indeed, they did. And Lawton, 27 career games at Stony Brook with the Seawolves, where he rushed for 2,102 yards and 21 touchdowns, gets his first as the Duke as Camden Wise chips in with the point after so the Dukes expand the lead that was one of the best drives we've seen today a sustain now wasn't all that long 45 yards 
but 43 yards technically, but still a good drive for the Dukes nonetheless. Five yard touchdown run, and the Dukes have the 24 to 3 advantage. Back with more from Bridgeforth in just a couple of shakes. Five play, 43 yard drive. Good field position all set up for James Madison. Results in the touchdown. And we see Jordan McLeod for the first time on the field for the Dukes, and he leads that short drive. Yeah, first drive for Jordan McLeod. It ends with a touchdown. That's good signs and great momentum for JMU offense. As a, as a coach, that got to be, you know, very interesting to have the two guys be able to get some reps and battle it out. Maybe the competition still goes on. We saw the upcoming schedule for the Dukes. It's a gauntlet in September. The next three road games over at Virginia. A lot of JMU fans certainly hyped about that last time they played in the early 80s. And this is a touchback out of the end zone, in fact. Then it's out uh, to Troy. So one of the better teams. Actually, JMU didn't get a real good draw from the West. They've got the best two teams in the West, at least in the preseason, in Troy and South Alabama. Now, South Alabama will be here at the end of the month. Bad will be back to join us in the booth for that one. And you also have that trip out to Utah, Utah State, which lost to number 17, Iowa, today. 24-14, uh, I believe, was the final. Bison. They are making a change at QB as well. Last year's starter Nick Simptonfelter, a captain for the squad. His father Scott was the quarterback at Lehigh when Coach Chakini had a record-setting season in 1993. And he flares the pass out, and it's pulled in by Josh Gary. Chris Chukwanicki gets dropped, or makes the drop, that is, and that's second down and eight. Yeah, Nick's first pass, he gets the completion. This team really respects Nick as a team captain, a, re a starter from last year, got a lot of playing experience, so we can see what he musters up on this offensive drive right here. Takes the snap. And the handoff, and running into his own man, but bouncing off and flying in. Q Reed makes the arm tackle of Bennett. Yeah, Q Reed has played a lot of football for James Madison. I feel like he's been here forever. He's been on a lot of good big moments for JMU. Q's father played at NC State when Kurt Signetti was on the staff there. And here's a third down situation. Three for 11 on third down conversions for the reps from the Patriot League. Back to pass. Here comes the pressure and the sack. Getting back in there for James Madison. A lot of purple jerseys led by Jalen Walker. Yeah, that was a big stop by JMU. You know, the quarterback took too much time back there in the pocket and JMU made him pay on that. He got a little stunt twist, so they got that right tackle all confused when really he's supposed to slid out to that outside defender. But anytime a defensive line stunt, they confuse the offensive line. Anderson back to pass, uh, back to punt, I beg your pardon. Average 40 yards per punt last year, and he gets some pressure. Had one block today. And that'll trickle out of bounds at the James Madison 39 yard line. And then we get to have drive number two for Jordan McLeod. See if he can keep the momentum going. One of the things to talk about if you're a Bucknell fan is that and one thing that coach uh, Cicchini is really proud of. This is his first generation of students who are seniors of yeah. their recruits. He brought in 26. All 26 are still with the program. That is very, very impressive. Outstanding. Now they did have a couple of guys that graduated. And here is Jordan McLeod and he's going to get sacked. 
You know, Jam, you have ran that play a couple times, and it seems like the Bison defense is on it. But what I appreciate about what Jordan just did, even though he just took a shot, he did not make a bad play worse. He had to make a defender miss, and then he had two defenders inside in, in front of his face, and he just had to eat it. Bright was one of those defenders. Palmer, the ball carrier, Parker zips in to take him down. Yeah, that play just allows the third down to be more manageable instead of being third and 15. Now it's third and 11. Duke scored three in the first, 14 in the second. Bucknell's three came in the second as well as the half ended, and JMU was seven here in the third. McLeod airs it out, and it's underthrown. He was trying to get it out there to Yamir Knight. Yamir, a 5'8 freshman from Smyrna, Delaware, and Latrell Palmer called him the next KT. Of course, we're talking about Chris Thornton, and that is high praise. <laughs> Knight also the brother of Wayne Knight and both of them are very fleet footed. Yeah Ramon Pearson went off the field kind of upset at himself because he had an opportunity at an inception but he couldn't come down with it. High punt hangs up there and fair catch. Fair catch. And that is bought in where the Bison will start off first and 10 at their own 20. I'm curious to see who, who the Bison come out with at quarterback. One of the things that make Raph Rucker so appealing is that he has the ability to use his legs. But at the same time, Nick Simpsonfelter, he has an opportunity to lead this offense as the leader and team captain. So it'll mean a lot to him if they have some, some success on this drive. Well, Bucknell's been playing football for a long, long time. In fact, you know, they won the first Orange Bowl, beat Miami 26 to nothing back in 1935. Kurt, you're kidding, right? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Wow. That's incredible. Football's different now than what it was then, in many ways. I mean, just look at Dion. He's got a whole new squad at Colorado. <laughs> Dumped off good execution that gets the hands and a little space to work with for Coleman Bennett picks up good yardage and he's going to actually pick up the first down Brent Austin eventually brings him down. You talk about Dion where well, here come the Bison. and talk about Bison he had to get the ball over that defender Fisher and they were able to ask you. We do get a flag. Plus start. 29 the offense. Five year penalty. Remains first down. You know, Kurt, you talk about Bucknell winning the Orange Bowl. One of the things that, you know, as we look down on the field, I'm looking at Damian Harris, and he has these really bright orange shoes. And he probably have them for a reason, like, hey, give me the ball, right? <laughs> <laughs> well. Yes, I Attention mean, it's like quarterback. You, you go hunting, right? <laughs> you want to be orange so you can be seen. Yes, that's it. Well, he's trying to be seen. And orange is one of the colors for Bucknell. For sure. And Rucker back in at quarterback. He scrambles, picks up some of the yards that was lost on the penalty as Aiden Fisher makes the tackle. Again, that's what makes Raph Rucker you know really appealing to this offense because he can utilize his legs and pick up a few yards instead of taking a sack right there he was able to use his legs as we come to the end of the third quarter and so we'll go to a timeout between the quarters 24 to 3 James Madison leading the Bison of Bucknell from Buffalo Valley they've been the Bison since 1923. We'll be back with more in just a moment. All right, we got a second down and 11. James Madison leading this here affair, 24 to 3 in the third quarter. 
as we start the fourth. And no gain on the carry. Devin Cole, one of the returning defensive backs for the Dukes. Let's find out more about this young man with Corey. Yeah, Kurt, Devin Cole's in his second year with James Madison after three seasons with Norfolk State. Really didn't emerge in the limelight as a Duke until late last season. Had an interception at Old Dominion. Now he's the chairman in a young but talented cornerback group. A tough and mature guy raised by two parents who were both sheriffs. But he also has a funny disposition as well. His father has become a successful stand up comedian performing nearly every weekend. So that's where he gets his hysterical portion of his personality from. I kind of wonder, you know, former sheriff, what his topic of comedy might be. We'll try to look into that. His little screen flared to the right side, and nothing doing there. The defense for the purple is right there. Yeah, I might ask Devin for a hookup to some tickets at there a comedy you go. show. Good idea. <laughs> Tariq Tucker, who is an, an emerging defensive lineman for the Dukes, big number 59, got back there. Now this, uh, that secondary has, if you look at the roster, there are a ton of guys working for time between the, the corners, the safety, the rover. And I mean, you look at Reed and Surratt, Cheese are the free safeties, Chekwinicki and Romanik, the rovers. Here's the punt and fielded and this time cheese just fields and he is dropped. Coleman Bennett right there on the tackle the running back getting a, getting a tackle. Hey sometimes you got to go both ways. Yes and right. that's what Mr. Bennett does. Timeout on the field early in the fourth the Dukes with the football we'll see if. McLeod comes back out again for JMU. We're back at Bridgeport Stadium where James Madison opening up this 2023 season by hosting the Bucknell Bison with a 24 to 3 lead. Duke's looking for their 21st consecutive home win to open the season or their first home opener victory I should say and JMU will have the football at its own 16 yard line and it looks like Mr. Jordan will go back again so questions that will be asked I'm sure by the media to coach Signetti about his two quarterbacks he sees out here today this thrown out to an open receiver that's Surratt and he's got his first reception as a Duke the former player for St. Francis Great fake screen, you know, all game they've been throwing it short, dinking and dunking, and this is an opportunity for him to pump the screen and get it out to Surratt. Surratt, a 6'2", 207-pound sophomore from here in the Commonwealth at Stafford. Elijah, they call him E. Whistles, blow, deadening the play. The on the field is a completed pass. The previous play is in a further review. They're going to take a look at it with review. So they'll take a little closer look at it. While well, they're looking at it a little bit more on McLeod. He had a career high 404 passing yards against Central Florida. I said he had a pretty big game against the Knights. Here's the replay for you. Uh, that's close. Looks like he got a foot down. Let's just see if we can see some green. And he got that, those white cleats on on the white <laughs> sideline. Makes it a little harder Ooh. to differentiate. That's close. That's tight. And so Jordan coming in, Jordan McLeod, 3,250 passing yards, 23 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, completion rate of 60%. Also, has rushed the football. For 432 yards and five rushing touchdowns. Completions have not come easy tonight for the JMU Duke, so I say the referee should just give it to him. What <laughs> you think, Kurt? <laughs> You're not biased, are you? Yeah. Well, you know, number two, while we're on replay, you know, I am familiar. <laughs> I'll be here. But number two. Really 
right on the field stands. Complete catch. Touchdown. Nice. Yeah. Jordan McLeod, trivia question for you. Okay. I don't, I don't even know. Maybe I think I know, but who was the last quarterback that wore number two at JMU? What did you wear? I think I wore two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that might be a real stat. I don't uh, know, but. Uh, you're I, testing me right now. It, yeah. You've called many games, Kurt, so you should know. Well, I should, today. but then again, I've called many games. The numbers <laughs> start running together. <laughs> I love it. Faking the handoff. McLeod looking tall, still looking, flares it out. There's a penalty flag tossed in a group. Hmm. Great coverage. Or was it? Maybe been holding on the defense. We'll see. Holding defense. You're right. In your penalty in the previous spot. Hey, first down. First down. So it was it still great defense if it, was, if it was holding it on defense, Kurt? <laughs> <laughs> well, that depends. I mean, if you get burned, yeah. you know the guy's going to score. Yeah, no that's great. <laughs> uh. The snap coming up from Tanner Morris. McLeod looks right, now looks left, We're now looking, at time looking some pocket. more. Here comes a flag, probably a hold, and McLeod will tiptoe out of bounds. And this will come back, and they'll tack on some penalty yardage against JMU. Number 50 to the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. We play first down. Now here I was trying to get Morris, you know, into the play, and then he goes and does something like that. Oh, look at Coach Signetti. Signetti, he's not happy about that. Typically, when a quarterback takes so much time to throw the ball, you're typically going to get a holding. Those big boys up front, they are not purpose to hold the line of scrimmage that long. Hey, maybe more concern look on his face. Not so much the hold, but maybe the decision that your QB makes. See what he decides to do here. Airs oh. it out far side, way over the head of number 44, Zach Thornton. Yeah, that was a great job throwing over his head. He really didn't have too many options open, but the cornerback was trying to bait him up there. That's number number nine, Ethan Robinson. Great job for him. Robinson with a couple of big plays early in this contest for his defense. Trying to run the ball up the middle this time. Gets a little bit of the penalty yards back. Kaylon Black. And Chris Bowers, the defensive coordinator for the Bison. Pat Clark manages the defensive backs. Greg Parker. Par Clark, by the way, one of the new coaches. Greg Parker, the outside linebackers. McNeil Parker. The safeties in his first year. And Colin Schaefer, the defensive line. Airs it out, looking, got him! Touchdown, Touchdown, James Madison University. It is Reggie Brown. And here comes those streamers, Kurt. Jordan McLeod with a great read on the cover four. The safety were too low. The, the receiver got behind him. Reggie Brown. Because of the replay. Brown 6'1", 195, fifth year senior, Lakeland, Florida, Kathleen High School. 24 receptions a year ago, 401 yards and four touchdowns. He's got his first one of this season. Man, that got to feel good for the coaches and Jordan McLeod as quarterback. That got to feel good for JMU to hit a big plate down the middle. The holder is Hanson, the punter. The long snapper is Caden Schickel. Good snap, good hold, good kick. And the point after is good, and the Dukes with 11.28 to go in the ballgame lead at 31 to 3.
We'll continue with more college football under the lights on this Saturday in September opening day across the country for most teams in college football. Welcome back to the Dukes out in front 31 to 3. As JMU will get the will kick the football off after the long touchdown toss 57 yards four plays 84 yards McLeod to Brown. And so Jordan McLeod has uh, come in and got the offense going here in the second half for James Madison. Yeah, that's that one two connection with Jordan McLeod and Reggie Brown. It looked like they've done that before. Connor Madden will kick it off. Did not play in 21 because of a leg injury. Fair catch to the 25. We're going to take another quick break and we'll get you. Back into the groove here with the Dukes leading it 31 to 3. <laughs> 31 to 3, energizing the crowd here at Bridge Four Stadium as well as the sidelines down to Corey. Yeah, guys, as soon as Jordan McLeod threw that aerial shot. To Reggie Brown that resulted in the long Dukes touchdown linebackers Torres Jones and Jalen Walker they scampered towards the offense they were skipping like kids at recess they were so excited for the success for Jordan McLeod as soon as the offense then gathered in after the touchdown was scored quarterbacks coach Tino Sinceri looked at his team and said hey we've got 12 minutes left how well can we play in these last 12 minutes just have to execute one play at a time and walk out of this game feeling good about ourselves. Thank you Corey Rucker his pass incomplete trying to get it out there to Kreinbucker but he dropped it the sophomore from Butler PA. Yeah I would like to see this offense get going a little bit maybe open up the playbook a little bit a little a little bit more and um, Damian Harris have been the most productive receiver so far so I'd like to see him get the ball. And. Simpton Helter will go down with another James Madison sack. This time it's Kamara. Yeah, that, that doesn't help. Going backwards. Kamara, six even, 265 pounds. Redshirt sophomore, missed all of last year. Stonebridge High School product. And James Carpenter, who certainly has a lot of respect on this team, calls. Mikel a difference maker. Difference maker he is. He showed it there on the last play. We have not seen a Konji back out for the Dukes. He went out in the first half, number eight. And Dukes are already somewhat concerned about experience depth on the defensive line. Trent Hendrick making the tackle. Of course, Isaac Ukwu, he elected to play his final year of eligibility he went to the SEC playing for Ole Miss. I looked at their depth chart he wasn't on it going into this weekend's ball game. Of course some of the others the Dukes do not have on the roster this year that they had last year of course Todd Santeo Jamari Edwards Chris Thornton who finished second all time in career TD receptions with twenty three. Third in career receptions, 168. Fourth in yards, 2,540. Surratt drops it and covers up. And Thornton, of course, uh, fan favorite, only player in JMU history to record back to back seasons with over 1,000 yards in receptions. Others, the Dukes. Remember from last year, Devin Ravenel, Jordan Swan, of course, Percy is J. Obisay. Finished with 39 career touchdowns. Kyle Davis, 
was the long snapper since the first day he walked on campus. Mateo Jackson, Noah Turner, Drew Painter. Drew's still around, though. He's, he actually is doing color commentary on the Morris Insurance and Financial JMU Radio Network with Dave Rigert. And the handoff goes to Lawton. He's got a touchdown today, and he picks up nine yards on the first down tote. Young man is taking advantage of his opportunity here at GMU after transferring in for Stony Brook. Kevin Willis made the last tackle. Mason Taylor makes this tackle. Again, it's Lawton, the ball carrier. Tyson, 5'9, 205 pounds from Staten Island. Stayed there and played at Stony Brook, which is also on Long Island. On, on Long Island, that is, and that's a, on the north side. Place where JMU won the 2018 National Championship in women's lacrosse at the home field of the Seawolves. And we get a flag. Start. 50 of the offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. Tanner Morris called for it. Yeah, Tanner Morris uses it all. JMU has a tempo, a speed to their offense, so it looks like they was trying to run out some clock there, and that was unusual for JMU offense. Sproles will come back in. Reggie Brown, who had the touchdown, also in. Coming to the near side, connecting with Brown again. He eludes a couple of tacklers and brought down at the 31. I think they might be on to something, that one-two connection. Brown and McLeod. Mike linebacker Brad Jamison makes the tackle from Upper Township, New Jersey. I like how he really got the ball out of his hands really quickly, made it a decisive decisive decision and got the ball into his best player's hands. This is 24th career game first as a Duke for Jordan McLeod. Three strap drop. Broken up looking for Brown want to get to the back shoulder and it appeared. Yeah it was like why not it's been working let's keep going to it. Pearson there to break it up. It seems like this moment is not too big for Jordan McLeod. You talked about Kurt, how he started and played in 24 games already. Even though this is his first game at JMU, he's, he's doing a great job so far. Quick pitch to the left side. Surratt makes the catch, brought down immediately. That's a long throw, but the Dukes pick up yeah. the yardage. Robinson brings him down. You know, throwing a hitch route from the right hash all the way to the left sideline. Man, that's dicey, but it shows off the arm strip for Jordan McLeod. Kind of whipped it out there. Lawton was in the slot, and he's not going to join. McLeod in the backfield. Snap count, and... Touch, uh, excuse me, reception by Moss. Let's introduce Maxwell Moss to you, a freshman from Brooklyn Park, Maryland, Archbishop Spalding, 6'7, 180 pounder. First career reception for, reception for the freshman. Welcome to Jim and you, young man. Yeah, Moss, another player that Kurt Signetti has talked about late in camp. And you can play these freshmen. Remember, they can play four games and still maintain a year of eligibility. And is it a catch? Yes, it is. Touchdown, Maxwell Moss. So welcome to the purple and goal as Moss into the purple for the first time in his JMU career. Watch how long McLeod rod it, and then he throws it. Great execution. The defense thought it was a run play. A little post route by Moss. 
that's that's really good. Really great execution touchdown, JMU. Here's the snap, and it's through. Camden Wise punches it in. 20, excuse me, 38 to 3. 6.35 to go. And James Madison taking control here this game in the second half. They led 17-3 at the break, but Jordan McLeod has had a very good second half for the Dukes. We'll be back in just a couple. It's a 38 to 3 lead for the Dukes of James Madison over the Bison of Bucknell. Seven play, 55 yard drive. Moss on the pass from Jordan McLeod. And McLeod said good first, uh, good second half of that is. Seven for 11, 144 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, completed 64% of his passes. Today's attendance, 23,756 on opening night. Boomed into the end zone. Touchback once again. Yes, yeah, speaking of McLeod, he's certainly not new to the end zone. That was his 25th career passing touchdown. But his first for James Madison. Yeah, first two, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. We'll say his first with Moss. One with Brown, one with Moss. That's it. Great to see some offense have some success in the past game after struggling in the first half to get the ball in the playmaker's hands. The Brown came in last year, 24 catches, 401 yards, and four touchdowns. Does have the TD today. And the Dukes defense standing stout, in fact, pushing the. Runner back a bit, and this is Emmanuel Bush called upon. 6'1, 302 pound from Lancaster High School in South Carolina, transfer from Marshall. Whoops. Free play. Yep. Air it out, and nothing doing. Yeah, for the quarterbacks that are watching, typically when you get a a defense to jump off sides. You want to take advantage of that opportunity by keeping the ball in play and giving your receiver a chance. Because at worst, if you get intercepted. Outside, defense, number 52. In the neutral zone, snap. Five year penalty from the previous spot. We play second down. Yeah, at worst, if it does, if it gets intercepted, it doesn't count. So I would love to see the quarterback keep that ball in play right there. You're, you're playing with house money, is what you're saying. That's it. Got Nick Septum Fetzer in back at quarterback here. Septum Felder, high snap, shoots it out and hauled in. Neal brings it in. And third down, but manageable, third and four. I'll make it third and three. And it's overthrown. Incomplete. Fourth down. Yeah, that was great defense by GMU. They were playing tight coverage, knowing that Bucknell's passes have mostly been short. And yeah, Surratt. We'll come back out for JMU. Yep, Cheese heading back to the 30. Anderson had quite the workout today. He'll punt once again. Cheese is back there for the return. And he may, he got a lot of green grass. He does. Right up the numbers. Takes a right and steps out. They'll mark him about the 30, 31.
All right, so we have seen, of course, Alonza Barnett, the third. He worked a little bit. We've seen Jordan McLeod, and now another new quarterback for James Madison, introducing Brett Griffiths, the transfer from Wake Forest, where his brother was one of those guys he was competing with. And his brother is the quarterback at Wake, which defeated Elon in its season opener. Wow, that's incredible. A house full of quarterbacks. That's right. Those QBs. The dad, dad must be the coach or something. All that knowledge. Wayne Knight, the ball carrier for the Dukes. Justin Fisher, the tackler. And playing for Dave Clawson with the Demon Deacons. Clawson led the Richmond Spiders to the 1AA, or excuse me, FCS Championship back in 2008. Flaring it out, and that is caught by Knight, and he picks up a first down after avoiding the first tackle. Well, Baker Griffiths gets his first career pass completion in his GMU career. Jack Coheen is the man that brings him down. Got four and a half to go. Folks, I'd like to thank, before we get too deep in this game, Ben Blumenthal, the Sports Information Director for the Bison, for all the information he has provided and setting up a lot of the interviews for us all week to get to, to uh, prepare for tonight's ball game as there's night again. And Jester Fisher, Justin Fisher again, the tackler. Of course, Chris Brooks here at JMU, outstanding Sports Information Director for the Football Dukes. Our producer tonight, Kelly Bowmaster, John Hodges, our director. Thanks to all the camera operators and everyone else involved behind the scenes tonight. Airing it out, Griffiths looking. Oh, that should be pass interference, and it is. Yeah, number number 14. Roman Pearson got caught just a little too early to the ball. The ball was kind of underthrown, which causes for Pearson to go over top. That's Junior Omarion Dollison. Pass or finish, transfer. 14 defense. 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. All right, first down. We get the official call. Dollison, a transfer from South Florida out of Columbia, South Carolina, 5'9", 182. We got Sproles, the transfer, Dollison, Surratt, Hudson to try to restock the receiving core. Flares it out right side. And speaking of Troy Lewis, as of just about to, well, he... Another one of the transfers. He played for Mike Houston down at East Carolina from Chesterfield, Virginia, 6'2", 201. Redshirt sophomore, Drew Cromier, makes the tackle. Kurt, a lot of these transfers are actually from Virginia. Yeah, which they is are. Interesting. Griffiths is from Virginia. And I would not be surprised if you went down and said, Coach, did you know about this guy? Did you know? I bet JMU was in on a recruiting, on recruiting on many of those fellas. Absolutely. But finally being able to take that next step to the FBS level, those guys now come back home and looking at JMU as a great opportunity. Griffiths keeps the football this time. Fisher brings him down. Third down and short. Duke's over 400 yards of total offense. They had 187 at the break, but much more efficient here in the second half. They needed this, Kurt. Going into next week, this, this, this is to put you in the position so that you can be confident enough going into next week. Handoff to Knight. Oh, excuse me. That was not Knight. That was Malinagi. Sammy, a junior from Nashua, New Hampshire. Number 23, not number 25. And Josh Pfeiffer also on the field for the Dukes. So we're seeing 
A lot of depth here. Carter Miller is the center. Redshirt freshman from Spring Hill, Tennessee. This is Knight. Cuts it back. Open field to the 10 and dropped at the three. Chris Sims stops Knight from getting into the end zone. Great job by that at offensive line. Here comes the replay. Look at the big boys work up front. Big number 77 getting a seal block right now. Aaron Gunn, registered sophomore from Newcastle, PA. And he played against the Dukes last year when he was at Louisville. Oh. His father is really big into uh, baseball. I met him during a camp hosted by Marlon Eikenberry here at JMU. Jamison makes the stop. Still gold to go for JMU. I got a feeling Brett Griffiths. He also won again in the end zone at the Alonzo. Alonzo Bennett got in the end zone. Jordan McLeod got in the end zone. Now it's my turn is probably what he's thinking. Dukes will not be back home until the end of the month when the Jaguars of South Alabama come to town. That's a program that was courting Mickey Matthews when it restarted its program. And that'll be the last play of the ball game. The JMU 38 Bucknell 3. Speaking of Coach Matthews, had dinner with Coach last night at the Hall of Fame. Nice. He and his wife Kay. As this Hall of Fame weekend, I'll say a Hall of Fame finish for JMU. Good second half for the Dukes to pull away from the Bison. And oftentimes your FBS teams will do this in the second half, kind of wear down the FCS club, and the Dukes win it. 38 to 3. That's 21 consecutive home openers in which the Dukes have come up with a victory. Madison, James Madison. <laughs> there you go, Bad. We're going to get a chance to talk real quick with Coach Kurt Signetti as soon as Corey can track him down among the masses there on the infield. And we understand that he has gotten to the Dukes head coach. What do you got for us, Corey? Well, Coach, your defense really played well today. Only allowed three points. Bucknell never got into the red zone. How did this defense carry your team today? Defense played well in the second half. Didn't play very well in the first half. What's your assessment of your quarterback play today? What's your assessment? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Oh, you're paid to uh, give the answers. I'm paid to ask the, the question. Yeah, well, I'll let the uh, performances on the field speak for themselves. All right, Coach, thanks so much for the time. Thank you. Guys, back to you. All right, few words. I don't know if we'll get much more out of him in the uh, post-game press conference, but you can uh, follow along on that uh, certainly eventually as well. Well, that uh, you came into quarterback situations where you had to fight for the position. You got still coming out tonight. I don't know if it's been resolved, but it looked clearly like. Alonzo Barnett was going to be the guy but tonight it was Jordan McLeod that stepped in and got the really the offense got greased with him behind the wheel. Definitely Jordan McLeod did a great job taking advantage of the opportunity that he had. He didn't get in until the second half. You know they gave Alonzo Bennett every opportunity to have success today but it just didn't work out. He's still a younger man and he's still learning. I wouldn't throw in the towel on him um, but Jordan McLeod experience is something that the Dukes have to value at this point. So McLeod among the numbers will point that out before we wrap things up. Seven for 11, 144 yards, two touchdowns, and he also raced one in as McLeod carried the football. To, no, he didn't score a touchdown on the ground. Two times for 10 yards, and the Dukes ended up on the evening with 436 to 208. So an outstanding second half, but only eight yards, I think, in the second half of total offense for the Bison of Bucknell. Well, that thank you so very much for joining us here tonight. I also want to thank uh, Yasser Perez 
And uh, Jeremy Lapidas here in the booth with us as well for giving us help today. And John Salem, give him uh, a shout out today as well, uh, working with us here this afternoon. We'll have you back for South Sep Alabama, right? September 30th. Okay, Looking you got it on your calendar. Yep. Yes, sir. We'll have you back. Hopefully, the interstate is clear by that time. A little yeah. accident today that, yeah. right here next to campus. Well, that'll do it for season opener. 2023 for the Dukes 21 of those that they've won in a row when they played at home as tonight they claim the victory 38 to 3 for Corey Spector Vad Lee I'm Kurt Dudley saying so long everyone have a great Labor Day weekend the Dukes work their way to a win